So now you've seen the inside, still full wrap around to the outside. I'll give you a quick brief rundown of everything and how it kind of works, but not a review on anything, it's just basically a quick rundown. So we've pulled up on the beach, as you can see, and we're gonna unhitch. What we've got going on here is a stone stomper. We originally ran rock tamers, but it did absolutely nothing. For a caravan, if you're doing it, get a stone stomper. These just unclip from the back hitch, from the bar on the back hitch. A couple more clips on the other side. You could probably just walk around the other side. Throw the handbrake on. Cruise Master DO45 hitch, because this is rated up to four and a half ton, and we're a heavier caravan. Got the 45. Basically all it is is a larger pin than the 35 and just rated heavier, obviously. So handbrake on, I clip this back and then take the breakaway, the brake safe breakaway lead off. So basically all that is, if the caravan ever comes off the truck, that's like a brake safe breakaway. So basically it slams the brakes on for us. This cord pulls the pin and that way the caravan comes to an abrupt stop. I basically just hook that onto the handbrake just while we're there. I leave the chains on until we jack it up. So I leave them on, but I take this all cabling and stuff off, all the Anderson plug and the tow pins and stuff, take them off. Now, once I've done that, I grab the jack out and jack her up. And jack her off. Jack goes on, we jack her off. Can you hear those kids? <laughs> hey, what's going on in here? Living their best life. Anyway, back to the caravan. Hold this, babe. We all know I'm good at catching that by now. I know. I like to surprise you, bud. So oh. we jack this up. And the reason I leave the chains on is just, obviously if this pops off and decides to run down the hill, which it won't, because we're in really soft sand. But if you're on hard ground, I always keep those chains on and I put chocks underneath the wheels so it doesn't decide to run away from us. But just in case it does, those chains stay on until I jack it off. So you have a look there, she's jacked up and over. And I know it's not going anywhere. Chains come off. Hook onto a little spot down in here, over here. Hooks on here. Pulled the truck around. Basically now what I do is I just level the van. So I've glued a little, little level, little spirit level down in there. So basically all I do now is I just go off that and I um, try and get the bubble in the middle. So with this hydraulic jack, I just let some uh, pressure out of the jack until the bubble comes down to where I need it to be. And then I grab my airbag remote. Drop and raise the airbags until, so it levels it side to side. Welcome to the Cartwrights. We're a family of five traveling to the most remote places our beautiful country has to offer in our home on wheels. Our dream since the day my husband and I met has been to touch all corners of this land. To be able to share it with our children makes us pinch ourselves every bloody day. So here's our life. Buckle up and we hope you enjoy it as much as we do. I work front to back basically just to help my silly brain so I don't forget anything and you guys have a thousand questions for me. But actually, do you know what? Swing this around. Look at this. Look at this. Look at my cameraman for today. Say hello to the newest edition too. Hello. Hello. All that beautifuls. I hope it's a girl. I am a girl. You are a girl. Yeah, I hope you're oh, a girl. Oh, the baby. Too. Yep. What are you? Big boy. You're a big boy. <laughs> right now, tap on the drawbar, two nine kilo gas bottles. We've got two toolboxes up front. The one on this side has a Weber in it, knives, barbecue stuff, all the stuff that keeps us fed. This side's my toolbox, blowers, etc., etc. all the fun stuff. All the stuff to fix what's broke. And then up the top, I just got more, more like consumables and things like that. And air, airlines slide under there, because I bust airlines and airbags a lot, because I try. Apparently I'm rough on the gear. I know what you're talking about. That's our window, so it's got a stone protection at the front. Basically that goes up, and then we can open the window behind it. Front light, so that's like just like a light bar, like a standard light bar. Maybe we'll get on a vehicle. 
got these here, they're like little bins. This one has all our electrical gear. This one has our chocks stabilizer leg. And this morning it had a frog in it too. Yeah, it scared <laughs> the living daylights out of me. So this one has our chocks and they just go under our stabilizer legs in soft sand because your stabilizer legs sink. What's this? This is a tunnel boot? Tunnel boot in the front. It goes all the way through. It's got some lights in it. It's carpeted, it's all nice and neatly finished and whatnot. That's where, that's basically the garage for the caravan. It's a little bit smaller than your garage at home. Awning, it's a different, different type of awning. I don't think it's the usual one. What's the name of this one, mate? A global. It's really long. It's done the job. It's been good. Standard Aussie Traveler door. For your entry, they separate. Like so, so you've got fly screen. We'll close this because the aircon's on inside. Then you've got full seal and you can lock it so no dust gets in. Got one of these lighty my lighty thingies for your entry, so you can see the entry apparently in the dark. Then we've got pull down tables. Yeah, ours are lockable. They pop down like that. Then you've got outdoor tables. We've got another table here. Of course, I'm not going to pop that down for you. This is our entertainment hatch. We plug out plug out ice machine. This is our cruise master controls for our airbags and also for our compressor. We've got like a line out if we want to pump up our tires for when we drop our PSIs for the beach, TV antennas, USB ports, 12 volt cigarette sockets, GPOs, Starlink goes in here. So basically Starlink st stays in here permanently. We just run the cable out. That way, a lot of people mount them on their caravan. I like to just be able to spread it wherever. If we're in a tree spot with heaps of trees, we can cover it up that way. We've got an outdoor fusion radio. That one is separate from the one inside. I think we can link them, but we never really do. I just connect to this one and that way they can have a disco inside and I can have a disco outside if I want. Here, I don't know how Masterpiece lets things leave the factory like this. He most definitely did not get attacked by a dinosaur. I didn't do that, I swear, that came like that. Another uh, GPO outlet. These here, mum installed. I'm not quite sure, what are they called, babe? Just the fusion, fusion lock, fusion hooks. Everyone's got them. Everyone's got them. And they, everyone swears by them. Everyone Same swears by them. Yeah, Same good. with us. We've been off-road. Got bike racks. Our bikes that never ever come off. The kids' bikes always come off, but it's a thole or thule. Does anyone know how to say that? Is it thole, thule? It's a Sweden product. Crush bag, bag on the back. Now, I love crush pad. Two jerry cans we just put water in. At the back here, which are very handy. Then we've just got like a firewood box at the back. We've got the kids crappy fishing rods in there and firewood and then we've got our grey water hoses as well. This is our hot water system. It's a Truma. It's dusty. It does the job. We've got hot water for days. We don't we don't ever run out of hot water. The only downside of having an instantaneous hot water like that is it take if you're off grid it takes a good 15 10 to 15 seconds for the hot water to kick in which wastes a little bit of water at the start but like being a silk. Toilet canisters, so basically our toilet's on the other side of this wall, the canister goes underneath and that's where I change the dump points from. We've got grey water bypass and uh, a grey water outlet. If we're pulled up anywhere and I've got the, um, the hose connected, I'll just pretty much shut the uh, outlet off and open the bypass and that'll, um, that'll let the grey water just flow straight out. This is the inlet for our caravan, so basically that's a 15 amp socket plug into any sort of power source that'll make you run off the grid rather than run off your batteries and your solar and just a breaker right next to it. This is just in behind the fridge, so you open this up on a hot day, let it flow out. But we also have all our uh, hoses and stuff which connect to our inlet just down the bottom there. So we've got an inlet for when we connect to the water mains. The inlet just goes here. This is how we fill our tank. So basically, there's two different methods. There's You've got like inlets that you can normally fill up with taps, which we've had on our last caravan. And then we've had this as well. This is so basically, you can all you do is you stick your hose down the inlet fills up your tanks and you can pour jerrys down there as well which is also pretty handy and we can pump it straight over to from the truck got a light just up there on the top basically throws a shitload of light out this way if we need to boys look at this they're using all our water mate can you turn that off please what mate we've, we don't we're off grid we don't have water can you turn it off please oh and we're having more kids. this is the other side of the tunnel booth so obviously that goes the whole way through chairs spare canister because mum poos herself a lot that's that and, and another light just over here over the top of the tunnel boot if you ever work walking uh, around this side to grab something at night also what one thing that i didn't manage manage was just this pvc here um, we keep our anti-flap kit for our awning in there pretty sure that's it for the outside uh 
the wrap around. I'm gonna take you under the caravan now and show you what's going on under here because it's my favorite part of the caravan. Right, yep, yep, yep. So the chassis is made by Cruiser, Cruiser Industries, and it's literally the coolest thing ever. The whole suspension system, everything basically from the floor down is done by Cruiser. I love it. It's just the coolest. Now this thing has taken an absolute beating. We have genuinely thrashed that. I've seen, well, I've had mates send me a couple of videos of people saying that the liner that they spray their chassis with, you know, they barely get a ding, they barely get a scratch, but like, that's just complete nonsense. Well, if you look at the way we tour, we tour hard and we, we really have a red hot crack, but if you're going on any sort of dirt road and not just our caravan, I'm talking every caravan ever that we've pulled up beside, we've been doing this for nearly two years now. Like if you're having a go and you're getting off the bitumen, your chassis liner is gonna have damage. Like it just is what it is. Like if it's getting peppered by rocks, it's getting damaged. Like if you look at this, we've had this caravan for oh, six months now. The truth of the matter is, that's gonna happen. It's, no matter what you line anything with, if you've got someone telling you that they've got a couple of chips on their liner, on the drawbar, or, or anywhere that's exposed to rocks, they're paid by someone to say that. It's, it's just not the truth. It is 110% not the truth. This is like, I'm not quite sure how the chassis or how much the chassis alone is, but it's a top of the line chassis and it's built really, really well. And it's lined with a high quality product. Long story short, there is not a product that exists that's gonna survive tennis ball size rocks being thrown at it at a daily basis when you're going hard. If you wanna stay on the blacktop and look after your caravan like a normal person, that's fine. But if you wanna go and have a red hot crack, there is nothing. Hi, Daddy. Hello, mate. I love you. <laughs> if you have a look up here that's not in like the strike zone, like I can get in close for that for, to that for you. There's no, there's no dings, there's no scratches. It's held up really well. But the fact of the matter is, if it's getting peppered like this on a daily basis, it's just like even the rear axle there is nowhere near as bad as the front axle but i just wanted to show you that so you aren't getting sold absolute crap which is what you're being sold what the whole market is sometimes absolute crap there's nothing that's impenetrable and you can hit that with a hammer repeatedly and you'll be fine oh, look at sin mice how are you going and you'll be fine but like throwing tennis ball size rocks while you're going 100 kilometers an hour on a corrugated track i'm sorry but there's just not a coating this is the every caravan company out there. Stop lying, full of shit. Righto, in my opinion, Cruiser Industries chassis is the best chassis on the market. It is as tough as nails and it is, this, the way everything's designed is actually super smart. So I'll run through it for you. So it's basically, you've got J-Max trailing arms just here. What that means is it's got like a singular point of attachment, both here, here, and obviously, the whole way around. Now that in combination with the fact that it's a solid axle, which means there's an axle from side to side, one solid axle and another one on the back. The fact that it's not independent suspension, which means that all that there's a multiple trailing arms on one side here, sort of like your standard cruise master suspension and things like that, which is still a great product by the way, this is just another way of doing it. But that means that you never have to get a wheel alignment. With independent suspension, if you're going as hard as me, you're getting a wheel alignment once every 10,000 Ks, otherwise you're scrubbing the crap out of your tires and things like that. So basically what this means is that no wheel alignment required and it's as tough as nails. You literally have to bend an axle for your wheels to jump out of alignment or anything like that. And to bend one of those axles, good luck. You're going pretty hard. So all that means is there's no wheel alignment. You might need to rotate your tires every so often, but I've had no scrubbing whatsoever. It's going, we've had it for what, six months or whatever. And no, we might be due for tires to be rotated. But if I was to show you the tires, it's very minimal. But you'll see all the components here of the suspension system are on the outside of the chassis. With independent suspension, the components come up, come up on the inside of the major chassis rail. So basically everything's on the outside and what that does is gives us a long trail here all the way up to the front for our water storage. So it, it runs the whole way through. What Reese does with his own caravans is he can connect all the tanks up as one single ballast. You've got one fill point and that one fill point fill point fills up all his wet water uh, water storage. I haven't seen anything quite as clever as that in terms of water storage and whatnot. What that means, the way he sets up his suspension means is you can get larger airbags, rolling lobe airbags into the suspension system. So basically a standard independent suspension system would have a, a six, six inch bag. This basically has a 12 inch bag, which means the travel on them 
is twice as far. So they're huge airbags. This is the limiter strap just here. Couple of advantages to this. One, you travel in your suspensions a lot better. You've got about 12 inches of travel as opposed to six. But what it also helps with is over corrugations. Now this caravan, I shouldn't say the caravan, it's more the suspension setup that makes it like this. It is the best caravan that I've owned and I've been on the road for a while now and spoken to other people, but by far, because of the size of the airbags, this caravan is like a dream over corrugation. So basically we can increase the PSI in the airbags. It's the opposite to a tire. You can speak to anyone at Airbag Man about about this or anyone that's an expert in airbags it works the opposite to tire so if you lower your tire pressures over corrugations it obviously helps with with the bumps for the caravan and for your vehicle airbags work different if you increase the psi in your bags or increase the pressure in your bags what that does is you allow the bag to absorb this is a very layman's terms way of explaining this by the way it allows the bag to absorb the vibration across the full travel of the bag. So because of the size of these bags, you can sit in this caravan. We could be going over the gear, we could be going over the harshest corrugations you could find, and you could play elevator music in there. Do you know what? We will play elevator music over the harshest corrugations in there, and you could not tell in that caravan. It is literally a bloody dream. I've never seen anything like it. It is the most impressive suspension system for touring. Do you know what? It's pretty bloody good off-road too, but for touring in general, corrugations and things like that, it is just truly, truly impressive. It is the best suspension system I've seen and I've been doing it for a while. So that is the major for me as a caravan owner. That is the major, the biggest thing about this suspension system is that it is so bloody smooth over corrugations. The chassis is fully sealed Duragal, and then it's it's lined with what we call a speed liner. What that does is basically, it saves you about, so if you would hot dip galvanize, which is probably like ideally the greatest option you could, you could do, but if you were to hot dip galvanize this, you can never fully completely estimate it, but you'd probably save 40 to 80 kilo, or you'd probably have 40 to 80 kilos in your chassis extra, just from hot dip galvanizing it. And as a builder, carpenter, the hop dip galvanizing something makes sense to me if you've got a property that sits on the beach for 10, 15 years. But if you're cleaning the underside of your chassis and there's no, and it's fully sealed and you're looking after it well, hot dip galvanizing, although it's a completely amazing insurance option, you can't then coat it. So one, it's hot dip galvanized, it looks ugly. But two, it's just a little bit of overkill in my opinion, there's gonna be caravan experts everywhere that are carrying on like pork chops right now. But I would never hot dip galvanize my caravan chassis. It's very ugly and it's very unnecessary if you're looking after your caravan. Although I trash my gear, if we're on the beach, as soon as we leave the beach, I wash this thing for two hours. It's just, it's a house, it's, the, it's just the way it is. Like, and there's also componentry in this chassis that you have to wash out and the hot dip galvanizing is not gonna help it because the chassis is galvanized, but being able to hop dip galvanize everything under here is literally impossible. So you have to clean it out. So it's kind of, and to me, don't everyone shoot me, it's kind of counterintuitive to be hop dip galvanizing someone, Jesus. How good's the Northern Territory? <laughs> it's loose up here, right? Eh? It's counterintuitive to hot dip galvanize the chassis and then have all this other componentry that's exposed and not galvanized and like rust would form on that if you're not washing it, if that makes sense. Like it's overkill and then underkill. Also, another added feature of setting up your suspension like this is we also have way more travel, which means our departure angles are better. You've probably seen me get myself into a few sticky situations. Around the full perimeter as well of the caravan, we've got these We've got a full perimeter beam. Uh, there's a lot of caravans on the market, and I would say most caravans in the market that just basically have a Z flashing that goes down on the outs and goes around the outside where the external cladding sort of falls down over the top of it and they water seal it from there. So that's a full perimeter beam that wraps the whole caravan. Um, so basically norm normally these little outriggers would be your strength to the outside of your caravan and they're just welded on and then there'd be just like a little Z flashing sort of comes around here. The bonus of having that is one strength that completely supports the wall of the caravan. And also if I'm ever in strife, I can just get my high lift jack out and just jack that up, jack the side of the caravan up and 
pop myself out of some sticky situations. Now, at the start of the video, my wife said that she's not really willing to, you know, review anything just yet, just because we've only had these caravans for about six months, maybe a little bit longer or something like that. But if there's one thing that we are very confident in, it's this bloody chassis. Like I've pushed this thing so hard and it's literally not only designed the suspension system designed so bloody well, but it is tough as nails. It truly is tough as nails. Righto, I might get up on top of the van here and show you the solar, hey? Don't judge me, our bloody solar panels are as dirty as I think they've ever been. You can watch this old man struggle to get up on the caravan. Radio, hopefully you can hear me because it's windy and the aircon's running at the same time. I'll speak loudly. Automatic DRS. I've got, I think they're called fantastic hatches. Basically you pop them up, you can have them pumping air in and out. They're really, really good. They're actually an amazing product, them. Um, we've got 1250 watts of solar up here. So five panels. We've got the Truma air conditioner, which you've seen from underneath, but that's basically what it looks up top. That's a big hatch. We've showed you that from the inside. That just pops up. And then we've got two bathroom hatches with fans in them that sprays that can pump air in and out. Basically exhaust fans, but a caravan's version of them. An air con. Oh, and we've got our antenna here for the TV, which we never use and probably have only used once in the time that we've been in this caravan. Yep, and that's pretty much it up here. We'll give you a further review and rundown after about 12 months of having the caravan. We'll give you a full review view of the whole off-grid system and really explain to you our experiences of having an off-grid system like this, what you need, what you don't, what's over the top, what they're telling porcupies about because there is plenty of, if you own a caravan already, you know there is so many bloody porcupies told in the caravanning industry and I'll probably name fingers and point names to tell you the truth because I'm really sick and tired of the lies. Like you pull up next to mates in caravan parks and they tell you all the problems they're having and Man, if there's anything wrong with this caravan as well, I'll tell you exactly what's wrong with it. You know, from now, I'll speak my mind. It gets me in too much trouble, but I don't care because it, it's really gone too far with how many lies they're told in the industry and how dishonest it is. It is literally worse than the car, secondhand car dealership industry. It is, it's atrocious how often these blokes and women ripping the consumer off with absolute lies. Anyway, that brings me to an end. I'll go get the hugs and kisses. I think she's sitting in here in the aircon. Darles, you want to come say goodbye to everyone? Yeah. I got her out of the aircon. <laughs> um, it was so nice in there, it by was, the way. Eh? Anyway, that's our caravan. That's our house, actually. It's not a caravan to us, it's is not. it? It's not. It's a home. Um, sorry we haven't given you a full review of it either. Like, I just think it would be unjust for us to have a caravan for six months, although we've thrashed it a lot harder than anyone else probably ever has in a 20 four month period. How long have we had it? I don't know, but it hasn't been 12 months. I told them it's six months. It's been six. We've had yeah. it for six months. Yep. Yeah. I'll get rid of that for you, babe. Don't worry about it. No. Did they see that? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry guys. Yeah. I was eating a chip. Anyway, guys, these go. <laughs> we'll see you next wow. week. Bye. When are we getting one of those? Soon. Soon.